Hello friends, hoping that the life forms that we discovered in Venus's atmosphere are accepting of neighbors because I want to leave this planet here, bringing you another Dota 2 video in which we're going to be talking about four new trends that pro players are currently abusing to win their pubs. So without further ado, let's just get right into it. The next thing that I want to show you is something that you see fairly frequently in pro level pubs and you see it in pro matches these days amongst the kind of edgy players. This is something that hasn't really trickled down to the average pro-level player. It has definitely not trickled down to Divine, Ancient, and so forth, because it's something that's so new that uh, it just it hasn't made its way there yet. And that trick is illusion baiting. So you can see Febby here in this clip, who, by the way, is a god. You should definitely watch his stream. He is waiting for this six-minute rune. He sees that it's an illusion, and what you do is you split up the illusions, you send one of them just off somewhere, and then you micro one of the illusions with your main hero. He even does something extra cool here, where he sends the illusion to walk into the vision range of the catapult for just a moment. And now think if you're on the enemy team, what do you think if you just see a... Uh, a tiny walking mid, even if you just see the hero icon on your minimap, you're automatically going to assume, okay, tiny is ganking mid, tiny is trying to protect the tower from the siege creep. And so, automatically that sets in the head of the enemies that tiny is mid. So when he walks these two illusions top, or what looks like two illusions top, Spectre just sits here and fights with them, just indiscriminately because she thinks that they're just melee illusions, and so they're very, very tanky. And I'm not sure if at this point... Spectre knows or doesn't know that that was the actual Tiny that she was fighting. I would imagine probably not because he's able to walk up and get this toss and avalanche off. But like I said, this is something that gets abused frequently. And almost every time when you see two heroes walking up, people just seem to assume that it's illusions. And so you can set up on people in ways that you literally couldn't do without like a blink dagger on some of these heroes. The next trick that I want to show you is something that is extremely easy to execute, and it's also something that's going to get you a lot of gold and make your cores very happy in a game if you are a support, and that is using a Quelling Blade or some sort of tree-destroying ability to stack camps that would otherwise be borderline impossible, and they would actually be impossible for most heroes that don't have some sort of stacking ability. So if you come to this Dire Jungle and you cut all of these trees right here, I'll just cut them all to make this uh, much easier to see. Uh, and then you stand on this mushroom right here and it wait for 52 seconds. You can hit this camp, hit this camp, and then hit this one, and it's going to stack all of them. So I'll wait till 52 seconds, hit this one, hit this one, walk up to this high ground here and make sure to hit it from the high ground and then kind of pull downwards like this. And you can see there's a pretty extended period of time where all of the creeps are out of their camp. So this is a pretty big window to get this stack off. And like I said, this is something that just abuses that 40% gold bounty that you now get. Uh, when you stack camps like this as a support, you can have your core come jungle. They'll be very happy with you. They'll get very farmed. And then you can also take their lane. So as a support, not only is this going to get you gold because of that 40% bounty, it's going to get you experience as well because you'll have a free lane to take. So this is not the only place that people are abusing this. This is something that you can do in many places. Uh, something that I saw Husky from 4Zoomers do recently is he cut these trees here at the bottom of this ancient camp. And the reason that he does this is because this ancient camp, it just got such a small window for stacking. In fact, I think Valve um, should buff this and they, they might actually buff this, but if you cut these trees down here, then it's much easier to stack this because as you can see, the creeps are at the very bottom of the spawn box for the camp. So you can pull downward, and if you pull up, I mean, just go into a practice lobby and try it. If you haven't tried stacking these ancients, it's impossible. It's the hardest camp to stack in the game. But if you cut these bottom trees with the Quelling Blade, which is only 130 gold, then it is much easier to stack. Once again, you can give your PA or your Terra Blade or whoever it is that wants to take ancients, the ancients, and then you can take their lane, and then boom, you're getting tons of gold, you're getting neutral items, and you're getting a lane to take experience in. The next trick that I want to show you is something that I saw in a European pub recently where a Pudge Spammer hooked somebody into the Roche Pit at level 1 and got a kill using the Roche Bash. Um, I don't have that particular replay in front of me because it was a long time ago and I just thought at the time, wow, that looks hilarious, maybe I'm going to give that a try. And here we are in one of my pubs where I did give it a try. So the way that I set up for this 
is I ran over to, you know, the typical offline spot where people would normally ward, and I made sure to place a ward that was going to give me vision of this high ground area, because I assumed that if I'm going to be hooking anybody into the Roche Pit, it's very likely because they're going to be coming at a trajectory down towards the rune, and then I'm going to hit them because they're just going to walk directly at the rune. That was what I was thinking. Um, as well as, I made sure to not walk far enough over here to the right where they would see me placing this ward and then think, okay, something is happening here. This this guy's going to do some ridiculous play or maybe he's going to hook with this vision. Uh, it's it's very easy to get greedy with the ward and try to place it over here and then they scout you and then this all goes to shit. So you don't want to do that. So I just made sure to place a ward that's not greedy. All I needed was a little bit of vision. Um, and then using the ward, I could see that the Undying was not in position to scout me walking into the Roche Pit. I walk in. I try to inch as close as I possibly can to Roche without getting hit by him because I would like to have the most amount of time possible to try to body block somebody into Roche, which I believe uses pseudo RNG. So if you can get Roche to hit the guy three or four times, it's very likely that he's going to get a bash and you're going to get a kill. Uh, this guy walks in. I wasn't expecting him to walk in this path. It actually made it easier to hook him. I hook him in. I body block him. He gets bashed by Roche. He turns around and dies to the Roche. I think Monkey King probably could have killed him there, but really it's whatever because he's dead for 20 seconds now, which you'd think, okay, well, you probably want to get a kill with that, right? But this is an, uh, an undying TB lane. So this is a lane that I think they're supposed to win, particularly because the undying is such a strong hero. So because he was dead for so long, I'm able to hit this hook on the TB. The undying has to walk in to fight um, and protect his, his terror blade. I get the creep pull off. I block the easy camp. That hook did legitimately set us up for a really good first wave. It let me do the cut. It let me block the camp. That set up for a really great second wave and a third wave. And the thing is, Dota is such a snowball -y game that if you can have a good first wave or a good bounty rune trade, I cannot tell you the number of times I've lost or won a game because somebody loses all of their regen at the bounty rune. It is legitimately really important to go for these sorts of plays. So since I've shown you a few meme tricks, I figured let's make the last one a really good actual high skill trick that people are doing recently. Uh, what we're looking at is a clip of none other than crit. He is dragging a creep wave at the start, which is a very typical thing that people do. Uh, just generally as a position four these days when you don't feel like you have the advantage on the first couple of waves. So with the Venomancer, of course, this is almost always going to be true. The hero needs some levels. So he is, you know, doing the typical thing back here. And what matters is that everybody sees that this is happening. He's in full vision the entire time. So everybody on the enemy team is registering that crit on Earth Spirit is up here. So he looks mid to see what the status is. And then he immediately walks out of vision and TPs. And this is exactly it. People are using TPs to gank now. And the reason for this is because Dota players are just getting better. People are getting way better at realizing that somebody has been missing from a lane for a long time. People are getting way better at making the call that somebody is missing and that everybody else needs to be careful. So instead of walking somewhere and then TPing back to lane, what people are doing now is they are TPing to lane and then walking back to their lane. And watch this TA. Like this guy is a 9k MMR player and he gets very easily caught by crit here who needs to, to do some body blocking to get this kill. And this sets up for an incredibly easy game. And you might think, okay, this is one clip Jenkins. He does. There's no possible way that he does this all the time. That was just one situation that arose where he did this. No, he does this all the time. This is this is 100% something that Crit thinks about, that Crit likes to abuse. Once again, watch him showing in vision. Everybody sees this. And chilling for a bit. Looks mid, looking for the opportunity. Sees the opportunity again after showing very quickly. He goes into fog and then TPs mid immediately. And then this forces the TA to use the TP. And he basically just won the middle lane for his Queen of Pain through these two rotations that are essentially way too fast for TA to respond to. And here's the thing. Even though that doesn't get the kill, this sets the precedent that at any moment, if crit is out of vision, even for a split second... TA has to be worried that he's going to be in the trees and rolling on her. So TA literally just jungles. He says, I'm done with this. I'm sick of this guy ganking me. I'm just a jungler now. And that's the crazy thing about this. If you are teeping into ganks and being this fast, people are going to react as if 
you're this fast. People are going to play so safe that you basically make a lane completely free, not basically, literally make a lane completely free for your mid laner. So if you're a position four, I would highly suggest TPing to gank, see how that feels. It's better on heroes like Pudge, like Tusk, like Earth Spirit, these heroes that can actually set up from fog, that can set up from your side of the river. But if you can do it, give it a try because I really do think that it's extremely good. I also think that if you are a mid hero, like you're one of the spirits or you're a queen of pain or a puck, it's better to TB to a lane and then run back to mid as opposed to running to the lane. Uh, because once again, people are going to be so quick to react to you if you are out of vision for a long time. But if you're out of vision for just a split second, people can't react. The only way that they can react is by hard jungling, and that's terrible. That's it for this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, a lot of people in the previous video that I posted were asking for an update on the hobo situation, and there was actually a specific reason that I didn't give an update, and that's because, like I mentioned in a previous, previous video, the hobos have actually lawyered up. Surprisingly, there's a, a lot of lawyers out there um, living on the streets, and so they've lawyered up with a garbage bin uh, lawyer hobo, and they've threatened to DMCA every single video that I mentioned them in. So. I personally am going to have to hire a hobo lawyer myself, so if you could go ahead and like, comment, and subscribe, that would promote me on the YouTube algorithm, which will get me some money, which I can afford to buy pizza crusts to barter with the uh, possible lawyer garbage bin hobo and uh, get this situation sorted with, uh, with my legal representation. But in any case, I do appreciate you, and I hope to see you in another video.